lab. There's just a push test material. As we are in this lab, safety should be our first priority. So we are your safety glasses at all times. This is my friend Sukhvi. This is my friend Hathri. And our cameraman just came and said. Yeah. Yeah. So we are here to uh, take our wheel samples uh, by uh, having our not this test and the change uh, by observing the change. Identify various zones in the two well samples using hardness and microstructure samples. As you guys know, that's what we are in our experiment is as welding is the process of joining two materials by a process of heat as we are heating the two metals and by after the solidification the two metals get joined together. So there is a possible a uh, change in the microstructure when where there is heat applied. So now we check the well samples. Here is a sample. The sample is Guru carbon. We will check first the hardness by Rockwell uh, hardness test. My friend will tell you how to do that. After performing the hardness test, we are performing the uh, here for performing the grinding. We are supposed to do the grinding on our well sample. After performing the grinding, which, which my friend will of course tell you how to do that, we are supposed to do for the go for the polishing. For doing the polishing work, we are supposed to first pour, pour in the alumina, everything. My friend will again tell you how to do that. That's my friend's part to do. He'll do the polishing. After going for the polishing, he'll wash it with the distilled water. After washing with distilled water, he'll go for nitrous edge. For then we'll be able to see the microstructure. Bigger pointer, do not close this point from 
This cycle, uh, the material is softer. Now we can see that the bigger pointer is moved towards the left, right side. That our material is harder. And the reading of this scale is 9 Rockwell hardness scale. So, we were there for the last course paper, so now our grinding is done, now we'll go for the polishing board. So now my friend Harpreet will take over the sample and he'll do the polishing board. Here you go. Thank you. As you can see, the surface of the sample has become as clear as mirror. And now we have to dry this sample. Make sure you use the extension because the coming out from the dryer is very hot and could harm your hand. Now, after the drawing the material, the sample, we are going to use a little, which is a very concentrated acid. It is used on the sample to, uh, to clear the green uh, structure of the sample, which we will see after magnifying. Make sure you use the holder because it's really very concentrated acid and it could harm your hand. with distilled water. Wash it properly. Okay, after washing the sample with distilled water, we have to again dry the sample. See, it's almost dry. Now the sample is ready to examine under the microscope. So now, are we going to start with the examining of the microstructure of the steel in the different zones, like first with the low carbon zone, then a heat factor zone, the vibrate zone, and the heat factor zone and low carbon zone as well. So this is an electron microscope. 
uh, attached to the computer. Here is the eyepiece, objective lens, the different powers, and here is the adjustment. Like we can place the our sample over there, and we can adjust at the low carbon zone by moving it. Can please show it up. First, I'm going to start with the lowest power lens, that is the 5x. Here, I can move this for focusing the sample. So, uh, after to move, I can move objective lens for more powers as well like like I have 10x, 20x, 50x and I have to choose which one best suits for the maximum features. If you move to the 10x lens Look at this picture. And if we move for the further power lens, that is 20x. We get this one. Similarly, we can move for the another 50x. As we can see, it shows a more clear picture. So we have to look which one we want and moreover for the transition where there is transition from the heat affected zone to the welded zone we usually take the low power lens as we want to get the picture of the bigger um, the graph we have got for the hardness of the various zones of our sample here we can clearly see that the maximum hardness is of the heat affected zone and the welded zone as expected to our theoretical knowledge. And now, we move on to the microstructure of the various zones. After carrying out all the processes such as grinding, polishing, etching, these are the pictures we have got for the microstructures. First of all, the low carbon zone. In this picture, you can see that the white colored grains are ferrite grains and the dark black colored are the pearlite grains. Pearlite grains which contains alpha ferrite and cementite. So the next one is the heat factor zone. In this zone the solid state transformation has occurred such as grain growth, recrystallization, phase transition, annealing and tempering due to which it has a coarse grain structure. And this zone is close to the weld fusion zone. It contains the grains larger than those in the low carbon base metal. Microstructure in the weld zone is expected to significantly change due to remelting and solidification of metal in the temperature beyond the effective liquidus temperature. The weld zone contains mainly the ferrite and the pearlite grains. The microstructure in the weld zone is heterogeneous due to temperature gradient and the chemical gradient that evolved during the process. It is hard due to the residual stresses after welding. In this picture, we can clearly see that there is transition from the weld zone to the heat affected zone. That is, the weld zone having the larger grains to the heat affected zone having the smaller grain size.